Hi everyone, welcome to the channel and my name is Manish Tiwari. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about few of the interview questions and their answers as well. So we are going to understand what kind of questions you can encounter during your interview. So considering that you might be already appearing for the interview or you are preparing yourself to appear for the interview, correct? Either you might be in a non-IT uh, non domain and you are now transitioning towards the IT. Or there can be a scenario that you are already part of IT domain, you are already part of DevOps as well. But you are just preparing yourself to crack the interview because when you encounter questions during the interview, what happens? Now just suppose that you are encountering questions, correct? You have appeared for the interview. And the moment you get the question, you just forgot that, oh, I just forgot this question. I cannot remember what was the logic behind this. From which particular section of this skill, this question is coming. Like you have been asked a question based on the AWS uh, VPC. So you do not remember that which concept of the VPC is being utilized in this question, correct? So for that kind of thing, you can join our batch as well. We are running the DevOps interview preparation bootcamp batch. And if you are the one who does not know anything in the DevOps, they want the complete hands-on training, you can join us for the DevOps training as well. Okay, let's start with this video here. And uh, in this video, we have covered few questions which are related to your troubleshooting on the daily basis and few questions based on the concepts as well. Correct? So this one we are going to cover today. So as you can see, the first question on the screen is, your Jenkins pipeline is failing with storage issue means no storage left on device and this question is coming from a real uh, troubleshooting steps so or you can say the real uh, troubleshooting uh, question itself because I have encountered this questions most of uh, I have encountered this uh, problem most of the time while I was working on a, one of the project correct that was our DevOps project so the moment you have this real project, correct? you have 20 or 30 number of pipelines, the multiple number of microservices and the different use cases, one pipeline for infrastructure creation, for different environment, for the different customer, the second one, correct? So you are, even though automate, there are a lot of pipelines to do different, different stuffs, correct? So at one moment, you will encounter this issue that no storage left on device, then how will you troubleshoot this, correct? What do you need to do? you need to log in into your Jenkins server where your actual Jenkins pipeline is running, the master one which is deployed, correct? You need to log in into the server, get into the directory where live workspace. How can you go? You can utilize this command cd then slash where slash live slash workspace. This is a directory what you are, you are passing to change the directory, correct? Once you have logged, you once, once you have moved to the workspace directory, what can you do? You can do LSLRT, you can see what are our files are there and whatever the temporary files are there, temporary workspace there are there which are not being utilized anymore. You can just remove all the files, all the workspace which is not being utilized. Okay? That way you can clean up your server, you can free up resources to run your pipeline, the pipeline which got stuck due to, due to storage. Correct. That's the one way. What can be the second way? In the Jenkins pipeline itself, you pass a step called as post step. There you can mention function to clean the workspace. Correct. Correct. That function will clean all the temporary files which are being created at the runtime. That way you can do the cleanup. So there are best practices. There are the way to uh, do the cleanup to uh, free up your resources. If these things do not work. And it's really the less storage le left on your device, no storage left on device. You can go for increasing the storage as well for your server. You can upgrade your server, correct? Now let's move towards the second question. I have to create one EC2 and install Jenkins, Python and Git on my EC2. Like I launched my EC2 and then I'm going to run uh, git clone command. I will clone out the source repository. Then I'll be running the Python. Like it's the Python uh, application which I need to uh, run, correct? So I will just clone that particular repository and then I will run the Python app.py, those kind of commands on my local system itself, on my local server. So for that, I need Python, I need git. And if you have to create local pipeline, you can run the Jenkins as well. So these kind of things you want on your server. 
but you do not want to log in into server to run the installation command for all these things like Jenkins, Python and Git. How can you automate this? Correct. You might have already launched EC2 instances, public, private, each and everything. But when it comes to automation, you might get confused. Like, oh, I have all I have always done this uh, command, like git command, the Python command, the Terraform command, everything on your server. But when it comes to automation, how can you automate these things that you do not run any certain any commands for the installation and it will install for you everything? How? So for that, there is a concept called user data in EC2. User data allow automated configuration of EC2 instances and how it can be automated? The moment you are going to launch your EC2 instance and you get into the advanced settings of your EC2 creation, you will see there is a box which is called as user data. In this user data, you can pass the installation command like yum update hyphen y that will update your package manager. Yum install Jenkins hyphen y it will install Jenkins yum install git hyphen y it will install git correct so all this script all this command you can pass in the user data and it will do your work when your ec2 is being created and the moment ec2 will be up and running and you can see on the aws console the moment you will connect this ec2 you will find that each and everything is already installed on this server you do not have to run any manual commands to do the installation so that way you can do the installation now moving forward we have third question my application is running on a public ec2 instance whenever server restarts that means you are going to start the ec2 or somehow it has been started correct my application stops working what can be possible causes and how to fix this so the thing is that you have one ec2 instance on this ec2 instance you have hosted your application locally this is running on the ec2 instance itself correct and the moment your ec2 gets started restarted rebooted correct the server stop the your application which was running gets stopped what can be the possible reason your server has come up and running correct after the restart but your application is not running that means the ip address on which your application was running that ip address itself has been changed so now the same ip address cannot be utilized to fetch the application so how can you fix this you can assign a permanent public IP address for your server so that whenever you either reboot, restart, the IP address which is attached with the server will remain static. So that way you can assign a permanent public IPv4 address for your AWS uh, for your AWS EC2 instance and then your application will be always up and running when your server is up and running. Now let's get into the question number fourth, which is again troubleshooting related. I have one GitHub repo. I hope uh, you can see the question. I have one GitHub repo where Helm folder is there, Terraform folder is there and source folder is created to store the code. So you have written down the Terraform related code. That folder is available. You have created Terraform folder and within the folder you have written all the files for related to the Terraform. Then you have help folder where you have written, all, written down all the templates, the values.yml, chart.yml, each and everything which is related to YML files. Then you have source folder where you have written all the Python related code which will run your application. Now, when you are trying to provision your infrastructure, you are going to run the Terraform commands. Correct? You can think that it's uh, the local execution what you are trying to do. So you get into this, uh, like you clone this repository on your local system and then from there you start running the terraform command terraform init terraform plan terraform apply and none of these commands work what can be the issue now the simple and the very first problem can be that when you have cloned the repo you got each and everything on the directory directory called as a or your user directory now when you are trying to run that terraform command this is not on the terraform folder and the moment you are not on the terraform folder on the terraform directory for the terraform it does not understand that what kind of file you want to run you will have to get into this terraform directory so that terraform can understand that oh here i have this all the files which are ending with tf extension so to run the terraform command there should be the presence of the, all the files which are ending with tf extension and the moment when you are outside the terraform directory there are no tf files 
so it will not execute anything it will say that it's empty provider there is nothing to run for me so you will run this cd command you will get into terraform folder and from there when you run this terraform uh, commands you will see the terraform file uh, terraform command will start executing so that's the fourth question related to your troubleshooting now we have the question what are the different ways of what are the different types of the ec2 correct so when you talk about the different types of the ec2 there are multiple or uh, in general we have written down the answers as well there are t series there are general purpose there are c series compute optimized r series memory optimized m series balanced one so according to your use case what is your requirement whether you are going to run a uh, batch related processes like uh, the first batch second batch will the this kind of task execution or you are simply going to run your web application or you are going to store you are run you are going to run your database on the server so based on your huge case you will select your ec2 instance types and the instance class as well when i talk about types and class type is like t series t3 like all the t related uh, instances and when you talk about the classes within the t series you have t3 dot medium t2 dot micro t like t4 correct those kind of instance uh, classes you will see when you get into this uh, computer to my you will see c5 dot x class c5 dot 2 x class so different classes of the same uh, family of the ec2 correct or the types of the ec2 that you can say then question number six we do have what's the default route in main route table when you talk about the default route in main route table the moment you create the vpc and you select vpc and more option on the console you will see that one vpc few subnets one main route table and one another based on the configuration what you pass route table will be created so what is the default one whenever you create any route table the the default route what you will see that will become 0 0 0 and the target as sorry the destination as your vpc cidr correct what does that mean that means any the any request which is coming from anywhere within the vpc so vpc is this box correct within this box the request whatever the request is coming from any of the corner of this vpc that can travel between the that can travel inside the vpc anywhere until and unless your one of the security group is not blocking that or your nsla is not blocking that so by default the B route table will be having the local entry as a 00 correct for the vpc cidr then let's move towards the question number seven what's the use of vpc endpoint or this question be can be asked in a different way i have an application running on aws ec2 instance which has to fetch product icons from the s3 bucket how can it fetch while keeping the communication as private so tomorrow i launch my website and on my website i want to show some icons some images correct this is like this this is image for devops training this is image for interview preparation this is image for mock interview correct so those kind of images i want to reflect on the website but these images are stored in the s3 my website is not able to pull those images to reflect on the website correct what can be the issue show the bpc the answer is that bpc endpoint what you have configured that has not been configured correctly correct so there you can create vpc endpoint that's the first thing then you configure your vpc endpoint in a better way like check for the configuration whether it has been created and that is it has been mapped with the private route table or not that thing you can check correct so <clears throat> when you are going to create it for s3 you select the type as gateway endpoint so that also you need to confirm correct? so that way you can do the troubleshooting like you create vpc endpoint you do the correct configuration and you will be able to establish the communication between your website that means your application which is running on the ec2 to the aws s3 bucket which has the image is stored so this is the kind of questions what we uh, have in this particular video and we have few more questions that one uh, i will leave it to you if you have any questions related to these questions uh, these uh, like if you have any queries related to these questions what we have covered in this video feel free to drop a whatsapp message to us and we will be discussing in detail about the your queries if you want to join training or the interview preparation bootcamp you can just drop a whatsapp message which is provided in the description.